So it's build guide time once again on the channel and we're back with our first proper build video for Marvel Future Revolution. Today we'll be looking at the awesome Doctor Strange. I found a setup that I'm exceptionally happy with. I'm so happy in fact that I've actually made Doctor Strange my main. It really is that good, this setup. So what will we be covering in the video? We start off with an overview but I'll tell you roughly how the build works so you can get an idea if you want to find out more. If you do, we then jump in, we break down the skills I'm using, I'll give you some alternative skills you can use for different scenarios as well. We then have a ton of infographics where we'll cover the potential you want to focus on, specialisations, outfits, battle badges and a mega cards as well. Now if the video is helpful, do take the time to hit the like, share and subscribe button. And with that all out of the way, let's jump in, let's start off with the overview first. Doctor Strange is possibly one of the most flexible characters in the game. He can be run as a damage dealer, a support character or even a tank, but it's the damage dealing side of things we'll focus on today. Now it will be the Mystic Art skills. We have four skill slots that are locked in in regards to what you use. So the fifth one we've got some flexibility there, so that's great for switching it around for different scenarios. We make use of an extremely overlooked stat that a lot of people I believe still don't actually understand. Now this stat in some instances can increase the damage I do by a whopping 50%, so it really is pretty amazing. And this setup works really great in PvE and PvP as well. So that's a quick overview, let's now jump in and I'll break down the skills we're using here. So skill wise here then, as mentioned, it's all about the Mystic Art skills and we have our fifth slot which is actually free, but I'll run over skills you can actually drop in there. The first one we have is Ring Repulsion, the damage this does is just absolutely insane and it's got pretty small cast animation as well, which is really nice. Some of the, the beam attacks take an age to actually do their damage with this, you can hit it, fires for a second or two and it does an incredible amount of damage. So we've got that first. We've then got a variation of Eldritch Sword, that's Tail Mandalas, I believe this one is called. Abilities like this are really nice because if there's multiple enemies it will hit the multiple enemies but if there's only one enemy then all of the projectiles will focus on that one enemy so it means it's a skill that's good for crowds and it's good for single targets as well. The next skill is actually the same, Book of Vishanti and Vishanti Assault. Works the same way as that Mandalas from a moment ago. You'll fire out multiple projectiles and if there's more than one target it will hit various targets. If there's only one they'll all hit that one target there. We then have another Mystic Art skill, this one is Mirror Dimension and Dimensional Collapse. This one, the damage it does is really nice and it's really over a wide area as well. It does apply Bleed, but personally for me Bleed isn't that important a status effect, so I'm not using it for the Bleed. I'm just using it for the fact that it's a Mystic Art skill which we can buff via our specialisations that we'll look at in a moment and it does nice dot damage as well. Now in regards to the fifth slot, there's quite a few options here. The first one you can go for, and this works really nice actually, you've got this one here, Crimson Bands of Citarac, so it's got a low cooldown, 8.8 .8 seconds, it snares enemies for 5 seconds, so when you're fighting your regular enemies, that's that's over 50% uptime in a snare on them, you drop that snare and then what you do is you drop down, we'll jump back to it again, you go drop this skill here, and then you'll be absolutely smashing them, and the enemies can't move, so pretty awesome that. If you're looking for more single target damage, you've got Gateway Summoning and Gateway Launch, that can be really nice. The only thing that slightly puts me off is animation can obscure the enemy, so if it's Dimensional Duel for example, it can be hard to see if the other player's about to cast a move, that's the only downside because damage wise it's pretty amazing. You've then got a pretty fun Confuse ability here, this one is Illusion Magic, the cooldown's on the longer side but the Confuse is pretty nice for giving you a little bit of breathing space. We then have a summon, and this summon doesn't do a great deal of damage but it's a touch of the Fishanti class skill and that's going to be important when we talk about specialisations, so do just bear that in mind. But that's the skills I'm using there, let's now talk about the potential, so this is the stats you want to focus on. For the potential, of course your goal is to max out if you're maining a character, but that would take a fair amount of time, so the priority I would say you want to focus on will be attack ultimate skill recovery because his ultimate skill is incredible and debuff accuracy as well so you're more likely to land the snare if you're using that 
I wouldn't bother with cooldown decrease, the reason being that you can actually run out of stamina relatively often in this build, so having your skills available but not having stamina to actually use them is pretty useless. Now, stats outside of the potential you want to look for is bonus stats on your cards and your outfits and so on. You want to look out for stamina recovery so that when your skills are available you can cast them straight away. And then an incredibly important one, and we'll talk about it more during the specialisation section, is one known as max damage rate. This was previously known as hit rate. A lot of people in soft launch believed it made your basic attacks hit faster. That's not the case. That's not actually what it does. So when you do an attack, it's actually got a damage roll on it. So let's just say, for example, the damage maximum on an attack was 100. It could also be as low as 50. So it would roll anything between that unless it was classed as a max damage rate hit, which means it would then hit for 100. I hope you're keeping up for me. This type of attack, rather than shown as yellow, it will show as orange. If you have a crit, it will be flashing orange. So you're looking for an orange attack. That is a max damage rate attack, and it's doing the maximum amount of damage. So you're looking for that on your gear, and through the specializations, we can actually get this up to probably 100%, meaning every hit you do will be a max damage rate hit. Now, the difference in damage from the lowest that can actually go and the highest is absolutely huge. So we've got a screenshot here where I was using an ability you can see it's yellow so this was just one of your regular attacks this was definitely the on the lower side so lost I could actually get for this attack but it's 16,672 doing the max damage attack which you can see is shown up in orange I had 25,669 that's a 54% damage increase now it won't always be that because that was a roll on the lower side but on average, you're going to be looking at a real decent boost from getting all your attacks doing your max damage rate. And with Doctor Strange, he's firing out a ton of attacks as well. So this is really what takes the, the setup to another level. I hope you managed to follow all that there. If not, let me know in the comments below and I can explain it even more. But that is the potential and that's stats to look out for. Let's talk about the specialisations now. For the specialisations, I would say there's three that's definitely locked in, and then for the fourth one, I'll talk about potential options. Now, the three that are locked in, you've got Will of the Destroyer. It's an additional 25% damage for all of your attacks. Your skill cooldowns, they actually, it says decrease, but because it's a minus, it means your skills take 15% longer to come around. But it's not really an issue, because again, in Doctor Strange, you will be running out of stamina on occasion, so it's not a big problem. The 25% additional damage is worth the trade-off here. You've then got Etched Fear, this is what we were talking about a moment ago, so it increases max damage rate by 67.5% for 5 seconds when using a Mystic Arts class skill, and there's no cooldown on that, so essentially when you're using Mystic Arts skills, you will have 100% uptime on it. Through your kit, you can get that additional 33%, meaning you can have the 100% max damage rate, so all your attacks will be the orange attacks doing that additional damage again, up to 54% compared to the lowest attack you can actually do. Next up we have Cruel Choice. This one here increases Mystic Arts class skill damage by 20%, so that's fantastic on them. So that's the three that are definitely locked in. Other options you've got available, so you've got Force Field down the bottom here, if you can maintain it stamina-wise. So it decreases remaining cooldown of all skills by 25% when using an Illusion Magic class skill. So that's your fifth slot, you would drop in an Illusion skill. If you want to make them a bit tankier, you can go for Hogoth's Blessing. This one decreases damage received from nearby enemies by a whopping 18%. And then finally you've got Wind of Truth. We talked about Touch of the Fishanti skills, that's the summon one earlier on. So with this, it increases ultimate skill gauge recovery by 25%, and his ultimate is amazing when a touch of the Shanty class skill is equipped. So again, for that slot 5, you could put the summons in there. The summons are decent, but you're really using it for the specialization to get your ultimate up even quicker. So that is the specializations. Let's now talk about the outfits. For the outfits here then, I'll mention the non-regional set and the regional one because the regional one can take a fair amount of time to get. So you want to actually take a non-regional up to 5 star in the short term and then once you get your regional you can use that for fodder to take your regional to 6 star. 
but your non-regional set here, I'm wanting to buff that beam attack we were doing, so that falls under seven rings of Ragador. So the two options, you've got your got your Defender's outfit, or you've got your Orny outfit. This is the one that's in the store for 2,000 crystals, so either one of them can be absolutely great on them. In regards to your regional set, you're going to go for the Hydra or the Sandier, because that's boosting your Mystic Arts class skills by up to plus six, and we're using at least four of these skills depending on your setup you might be running five of them so it's a pretty amazing upgrade there the only difference between the two is the third set bonus can be defense or hit points i don't actually know scaling wise how defense really works so i'm not sure which is better to actually go for the bonus if i do find out i'll leave a comment below but that is the outfits let's now talk about the battle badges Battle badge wise then, the first one you always really want to aim for is your level 100 battle badge from the Maestro Blitz. This gives you your additional super villain damage, so it's great when you're doing the Dark Zone, it's great when you're doing Blitzes, and it's great when you're doing Raids as well. So go for that first once you start to head into the Dark Zone. This can take a lot of time and there's a lot of RNG behind this, but if I was to go for any of these particular sets and keep one, I would probably keep the Lord of Jotunheim. You can see that's got that max damage rate and that would allow us to push towards that 100% max damage rate to ensure that all our attacks are the orange attacks doing that additional damage. So pretty simple section there, let's now talk about the Omega cards. For the Omega cards, I'll break this into two infographics. One is a free-to-play set, and another one is a set that's more for whales because it requires special cards you only get from the draws. But the two that I would actually go for, I would go for Midgardia 4. So this one here can give you your crit damage and your crit rates. So I would go for four of those cards, and then I would take two cards from the Xander. So it's up to you which ones you actually take. But if we take two cards, that gives us that stamina recovery. And again, as mentioned earlier on in the video, stamina can be a bit of an issue with them. So this can really work out. So that's the, the free-to-play cards that I would aim for. Let's talk about the ones that are only available in the store. So with this setup here, I would actually still use four cards from the Midgard Dear Four set. That would give you a crit rate and your crit damage. And then if I was to take two cards from these ones, I would go for your Dark Zone Four. So you can see two cards will give you an attack bonus boost of 4.35%. And on top of that, one of the cards you can actually get there has got a hit rate in it as well. One of them's actually got crit rate. So that would work out really nice if you went for them. But with that, that's really everything covered you need to know to take Doctor Strange to the next level. If the video has been helpful, please do take the time to hit the like, share and subscribe button. And let me know in the comments below which character you would like to see a build guide for next. And as always, thanks for tuning in for this. Stay safe and I'll see you all again soon.